Koichi-san, this is your new home. These are your crew quarters. This is on the starboard side of the space station. And currently, my stuff is here, and I'm about to move out. Uh, we uh, just got the uh, radiation monitors out of the other one, so uh, we're able to, uh, to move. Uh, you can see that the crew quarters are very comfortable. A sleeping bag goes on the, on the back wall, and we'll have uh, your sleeping bags uh, all ready for you. There are Velcro patches, various different places. Even already have your uh, iPod. Ready? Oops, we can't say it iPod. We have to call it portable player. Uh, your portable player is here. Uh, there's uh, room for pictures of your family or whatever. Uh, we can also bring computers in here. There's uh, uh, power and data outlets. They, they didn't have any short cords, so they only have the big cords here. And then, uh, but uh, during the mission, uh, most likely, uh, as opposed, uh, I mean, during when the shuttle was here, uh, most likely we'll probably ask to have my computer and your computer outside all the time. Uh, that way it'll make it easier for uh, everybody. We can, uh, we'll have all the headsets on it so people can make calls home and, and uh, use email and things like that. But once, uh, once the shuttle leaves, we'll have a little bit more flexibility and there'll be fewer people and more computers. So that should work out just fine. But these crew quarters are very comfortable and uh, I'll be sleeping across the way in uh, the port side crew quarters and uh, you'll be very welcome. I think you'll enjoy yourself here, Koichi-san. Okay, well, we're just going to continue flying uh, aft in the, into the laboratory module. And uh, you'll see the thing that I'm about to run into has a beautiful photo on it. That's what Earth looks like from what I hear. I haven't been down there for a while. But uh, this is, uh, we'd like to show you, this is the cabin as part of the waste hygiene compartment, WHC slash K, K for cabin. Uh, and so this is uh, the, the, the new American toilet that STS-126, uh, Sandy and Fergie and the, those guys brought up. Uh, Sandy and I uh, built this, or we didn't build it, we put it together. Some fine folks in Russia and the United States built it. And uh, this is uh, where we're going to, uh, you guys are going to get to try it out. I guess there's going to be a, a, a day or two where uh, we get to max load it to test out for six people. So this is uh, pretty much what it looks like. Uh, you've seen it, the mock-ups and everything like that. Uh, one thing that the mock-ups probably don't have is where we have all of the uh, sundry items. Uh, we have uh, two kinds of uh, toilet paper, Russian style and American style. We have uh, wet wipes and uh, and we have uh, a small trash container right here. So whenever uh, the parts that don't go into there, uh, namely after doing number one, they go into into this these kind of bags. Uh, Sandy and I and Koichi, main, mainly uh, me and Koichi, Sandy will be leaving, but uh, any one of us will do the resupply. So if you see us uh, missing something, uh, let us know. But if you, since you're kind of, kind of family, you know, when, how, when the guests come over and you don't know where the toilet paper rolls are, well, everything we have is in this uh, little CTV down here. So if you're really missing something and in, in somewhat of emergency, let us know. Okay, the control panel here, you guys get uh, briefed on. Uh, I'd like to tell you a few little things just uh, just for your information again you guys have great training on this there is a uh, how to use everything in auto mode uh, cue card but uh, which is helpful but uh, the main thing is uh, we're in a special mode called dose one mode and that means that uh, it, it automatically gives one dose but we have to hit another button uh, to give a second dose so that there's enough uh, preservative in the uh, in the urine containers uh, also, since we're in a, in a different mode until, uh, until Sandy and Ricky get the UPA running, we have this light on here, which is uh, on the cue card, not there. Don't worry about it. Four good lights. If any other lights come up, especially the red light bonus special where a tank is full, uh, you know, let me know mainly. And if I'm not around, you know, please talk to uh, Sandy or Koichi, and we'll change out the, the urine tanks. We will monitor those uh, pretty carefully, so uh, hopefully it shouldn't be a surprise to us. But with a lot of people here, you never know. Okay, here is the lab overhead three location that has all of the return items, uh, or will have all of the return items once you get here, with the exception of that 5 MLE bag we've already talked about. Everything's green tagged, so it should be fairly straightforward. All the numbers according to the prepack list. To Mike's uh, left is the water wall, the lab two 
wall where we've put all the water, and we'll be depositing some of our CWCs in there as space permits. And so these are probably the only two stowage locations in the lab that you guys need to worry about. Uh, the rest of the lab is kind of crowded, so we're going to try and keep as much stowage stuff out of here as possible. And you, if, as we float back, you can see the overhead six location where we really didn't want a 5 MLE bag right here. We've got several computers. We've got a science experiment. It's right by the RWS. It's just a bad place for a bag. As far as things not to touch in the lab goes, uh, just be careful when you fly through here. The, um, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's really easy to run into it and just be aware of that but there's really nothing that i think is super super vital any more than you know any other computer that you don't want to rip off the wall and stuff like that and for robotics uh, here's the lab rws currently we have ssc on this side that we'll use for procedures ssc right here that we'll swivel over and use for doug two computers on the top that will be set up on top of the RWS monitors for the two extra camera views that we're importing over from uh, the shuttle. And so, John, I know you like to run the procedures, so I think this is where you probably want the SSC with the procedures. But we can move this over here if you'd like, if you want um, you know, the Doug machine and the procedure machine to be on the left side together. Or alternatively, we could probably move the Doug machine to the right, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea. It's up to you. Let us know. No big deal one way or the other. The only other thing is the CMRS that we have down here will be gone. We're going to temp stow it somewhere else while we do robotics. It gets in the way of restraints, and so you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, one of the, the great things that you guys are bringing up to us besides uh, Koichi and uh, this uh, truss and solar array is uh, the UPA, the distillation assembly for the urine processor. And uh, it goes right in here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff in, in, the, in front of it and in the way. Now that's by plan. Uh, this is how the, the ground has us keep it. It's, uh, this was their design. And so we, uh, we, we run it as best as we can. Uh, it's uh, it's actually day to day. It's not an issue. It's only if you want to go inside here, which you will. So uh, Sandy was the person who uh, helped put in a lot of these brackets, and she's the one that's going to be uh, doing the main ch change out. I think it's with you, Ricky, uh, to change out the UPA here. So it's going to take a fair amount of effort, and uh, we're going to you know, move the sevis out of the way probably, and move it, you know, some of the brackets. A lot of this stuff will we instead of just taking it up and moving it, we can actually save a lot of time just by uh, moving it off to the side and opening up the door. So expect it to get a little bit cluttered, uh, but certainly there's a lot of order and, and logic and rationale to it. And uh, we did the same thing during 126 when we were uh, working with the, with the distillation assembly, and it should, should work out just fine for you. Uh, yeah, and Sandy has a good point. However, when all this stuff comes out, it, uh, along with the cabin and A-Red, there's going to be a, a, a kind of a traffic bottleneck here. So uh, I'd like to ask, uh, I think it's going to happen while two, two of you guys are outside, and uh, so we'll uh, have a little bit of less traffic there. But during that time, we'd like to ask everyone else to be really careful because we know that's a very important uh, piece of equipment. But uh, you guys know all that.